Hello everybody and welcome back to another Dyson video. I want to show you what I'm cooking up here. If you haven't seen my first video on the battery issue cutting out after a couple of seconds and the complete breakdown and cleaning of the vacuum cleaner, then click this link up here. This kind of takes off from that video. And what I got here and why I have my frying pan here is to demonstrate uh, something I'm working on. And it's why even after going above and beyond the cleaning of these filters, while you never get the same performance out of them, I want to illustrate that point here with this stainless steel pan, which is cleaned with regular tap water, very much like the filter. And when I hang this to dry, and all of that water pulls to the bottom, we're going to see what happens. And what we're left with in this obviously out of sequence video clip is the large amount of mineral deposit accumulation on the bottom of this pan. Now this pan does not have a lot of surface area as compared to the filter. All the water came to the bottom, it collected here, the water dried up, and these are all the minerals that are left behind. It's easy on this pan to simply scrub it away and remove it. You can't scrub away these minerals that bind to the individual pieces of fabric within the filter itself. And I believe we're having a similar issue with these filters, even though they're washed and clean. If you live in an area that has hard water and Pretty much everybody has some sort of content of minerals in their water. Uh, the filter is wet, it's left out to dry, the mineral deposits dry up within the fibers of the filter and performance is substantially reduced. And there's no way around that because all you could try and do is wash it out but you end up with a, a wet filter again. Uh, the minerals don't come out when you wash it and you further end up building upon those minerals. Furthermore, it could be argued that a lot of the dust that you vacuum up could have some sort of mineral content. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this filter again, as I normally would with water. I'm gonna dry it out. I'm gonna just let it sit to dry. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dissolve the minerals with vinegar, and then I'm going to rinse the filter off with a uh, distilled water that has no mineral content whatsoever. It's actually slightly acidic in that regard. Let it dry. And then we're gonna evaluate the performance of the filter after both methods. So let's get started. And I know again, you could buy a new filter, right? And that would save you the trouble. But if you could get several cycles out of these filters, then why not? This one's got some stuff in the bottom, and this one's not terribly dirty. So I'm just going to go through the cleaning regimen, and we'll leave it to dry overnight. Leave your filter to dry on the appropriate DeLorean. Now I'm going to take this fully dried filter, it's been sitting here overnight, and reassemble it into this cage. We're now going to place it into this vacuum that has completely charged overnight. This vacuum has been completely cleaned out, blown out, like brand new maintenance service. I'm gonna drop this filter in. And what we are going to do is we are going to do the time test again uh, with the tape and the iPad to see how many seconds it runs with this filter cleaning method before the battery dies. We're gonna say with the two seconds at the start, finishing at 16.18, ran for a grand total of 16 minutes and 20 seconds. So I'm gonna pop this filter out now, put this back on the charger. I'm taking this clean filter that got the 16.20. I'm opening it back up only because I don't wanna needlessly expose the rubber parts on top to the vinegar if I don't have to. But I imagine as far as the plastic goes, it wouldn't do any harm. I'm just better safe than sorry. I'm gonna place it in this Tupperware container right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use straight vinegar. I'm not gonna use anything crazy like muriatic acid or anything like that, but I'm not gonna cut the vinegar either. I'm just, it's not expensive. I'm gonna pour it in. We're gonna see if there's a reaction too. We're gonna to see if we get any bubbles or anything like that. Now, if there are minerals in the filter, then it should break down to produce uh, gas. We should see little bubbles. I don't know if we're gonna see bubbles though. We're going to find out. We're actually measuring it for performance, but 
Gonna fill this up. This is magical. It's not. Let's sit here and monitor it. See if we get any action. You would need a camera bit back here right now. Why to watch us watching? <laughs> We're watching, but who's watching us? No, so uh, before when I did the test outside of the car, I got 16 minutes and 20 seconds of runtime. When I did the test for the full cleaning uh, last month, I got 16 minutes and 20 seconds of runtime, right? Almost down to the second, I think like 21 seconds. So what I want to know is, will it change? It's so consistent on a full charge in that test. Will I get a better runtime, basically descaling the uh, filter is what we're trying to see here. Or is this just a, a load of crap? Our water is, is full of scale. Every time you get this filter element wet and it dries, it ends up in the fibrous material of the filter element and then you get more water. And it doesn't you... loosen? No, it doesn't loosen. Mm. It gets caught in the fibers. So is this gonna sit overnight? Mm -hmm. Vinegar will be applied to the pan without any agitation after the application. This is about an hour later. The pan has been untouched since applying the vinegar and the minerals have dissolved into the vinegar. This is what we plan on doing in the individual fibers of the filter without actually having to touch anything, simply dissolving it with acid. So the filter has been sitting in the vinegar overnight, and I realize this is just mass overkill, but because this is a test, I'm, I'm doing extremes here. And this is how I'm going to deal with the rinsing portion. And the thing is this, I'm not trying to clean the filter. The fil filter has already been cleaned with the regular tap water from our first test. What we were doing is descaling it. So. All I'm really doing is removing the vinegar. So I decided this is what I'm going to do. Since I'm not going to use like five gallons of uh, distilled water to clean this filter, I'm going to use my filtered water first from the sink here just to remove the vinegar. And after I've rinsed this for a while, I'm going to finish it off with distilled water, which I believe we're going to call sufficient for this purpose. We're going to say that at that point it's ready to dry. Again, I realize I'm going a bit overboard, but this is a control test. So now I'm going to fill this cleaned container with some distilled water. Distilled water is also mineral hungry, so any remaining minerals the water will, will bind to. It's extremely mineral deficient, obviously, because distilled. And this is that final rinse. Considering how something like this would be done, it would still be washed in the same way in, in the shower or what have you. But then it could be rinsed in something like demineralized or distilled water to wash away the water with the high mineral content. And then the uh, scale or calc or minerals would never have a chance to bind to the cotton. Doing a second bath, changing the water out just for good measure. Obviously, totally unnecessary for practical use, but I want to be absolutely sure. Set this to dry. Once drying is completed, we will retest using the same method we've used for the first two tests. We'll see what we got. <laughs> Looks like I got black fingernail polish from the spray painting. And what is the most comprehensive filter cleaning of, of any Dyson filter in the history of Dyson filters, decalcified, cleaned, and everything. I do this assembly, and we're going to take this out to the garage now, put it back in the vacuum cleaner, and we're gonna time this and see how it does. So here we go. World's cleanest used Dyson filter. Same test parameters as before. Use our tape. So I will adjust the time and see what it came out to for the offset of the tape. So it stopped at 1633 exactly, 
minus one for the delay turning it on is 1632. This is a gain of 12 seconds over the initial runs of 1620. I want to talk about this for a moment because even though it only gained those extra number of seconds, 12 seconds to be exact, over the first two tests, I want to also remind the folks watching or let the folks watching know that this filter has only been washed twice. There has not been an accumulation of 10 washes of washing and drying of tap water on this filter. This has only been two times, so there wasn't a whole lot of deposits of minerals in this filter to skew the results that much. But the fact that it was only washed twice and dried twice and had that effect and increased the time that much does show that demineralizing the filter does have an effect on the filter performance. So it does work, I do believe it does work. And if you did have a filter that you've washed on numerous occasions 10 or more times with tap water and you did this before and after test from cleaning it, I imagine you would see some pretty significant results, especially if you were losing a couple of minutes after you did the complete maintenance and you're like, I think the battery is getting weak because I've completely washed the filter. I've already lost like a minute or two. Maybe decalking it is all you need or buying a new filter, but decalking is worth trying with vinegar and then some uh, demineralized or distilled water. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button down here if you did. Uh, hit that subscribe button and that little bell. Helps me out a lot if you do. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?